on the session today? It was a good performance by the Australian share market and that rally really came in the last hour of trade. You can see from the intraday graph behind me what we saw in terms of the Australian market and we really closely tracked what happened in China. We've seen the Shanghai Composite up by 1.1% and that seemed to revive some of the returns on the Aussie share market. Now this is despite some weak economic data coming out here domestically as well as around the region. We saw the HIA home sales coming in at the lowest level in six months and in Japan we saw economic forecasts being lowered with the Japanese Nikkei trading down lower today. So in terms of sector performance, not surprising to see the energy and the material sector the worst areas and the healthcare and the utility space the best sectors. Also if we have a look at those stocks that reach 52 week highs and lows, it's quite an interesting exercise as well. If we have a look at those stocks which saw 52 week highs today doing quite well throughout the last year, there's really no detectable trend. We saw stocks like Boom Logistics, uh, Amalgamated Holdings, Sonic Healthcare as well as this, uh, Kadeco all doing well. On the flip side, uh, we saw some stocks reaching 52 week lows as well, and they included stocks like AV Jennings, we saw Atlas Iron 10, as well as Discovery Metals reaching those lows. Lots happening in terms of news coming out from the market as well. Newcrest, uh, we saw Lahir uh, being shut down due to a dispute with landowners, so that stock down by 1.9%. FKP Property coming out to say that it will be looking at um, $208 million or raising $208 million worth of debt uh, due Due to write downs to its retirement villages, that stock should come out of trading halt tomorrow. So, altogether, a pretty eventful day on the Aussie share market, and in the end, a positive performance. Up to obviously that Jackson Hole meeting. I mean, would you be expecting light volumes? Would you be expecting sort of just a, a watch and wait sort of. Uh characteristic? We have seen light volumes and it does look like even though we saw the rise today there's still a strong tilt towards those defensives so I guess not a lot of people willing to take a big bet ahead of such a big event risk and if we have a look at Jackson's Hole you've got uh, the, the world's largest central bank meters uh, getting together and I guess a lot of speculation that we could see some coordinated action coming out of that as well but it is surprising to see that we haven't seen much of a reaction in terms of the gold price which seems Mm. to usually be a, a big, uh, I guess, a, a big way that a lot of uh, traders in the market will play uh, an event like this. But of course, we, we are looking at macro risk and it's quite interesting to see how uh, markets are trading ahead of this, uh, this very important meeting and some other important meetings coming up in the next few weeks as well. In fact, if we have a look at the Australian market, I mean, we look relatively cheap and we hear it so many times with the PE ratio around about 13, but then you compare it to something like the Chinese market where the PE ratio is just 9.4 and you start to um, wonder whether the Australian market is good value. So I guess the market's just adjusting themselves but very cautious ahead of this Jackson Hole meeting. The market's hoping to see stimulus not only in the US but in China as well as in Europe but the US seem seemingly less likely to get a QE because of the better data which has been coming out and of course overnight we saw that Dallas survey and although it was still a negative reading much better than what the market was expecting. John, um, one of the stocks we saw obviously today, uh, mentioned a little earlier by Michael, but your thoughts, Julia, in terms of seven group in the end closing up just shy of, of 6%. A really good performance by Seven Group, whether you look at its profit result or its share price performance. And we actually saw profit up by 136%, underlying profit up by a massive 39%. Now, if we have a look at Seven Holdings, this is a stock which often trades like a media company. But if we have a look at what drives its earnings, it's really the industrial uh, part of its profits. And that's what we saw coming through in its profit states. Industrial division was very strong. And that includes, of course, the division, uh, the Caterpillar uh, licenses as well. And if we have a look at it coming out from this division, it was up by 65%. And this is going to be a key driver through the next couple of financial years. We are expecting to see the industrial profits coming through from seven holdings to increase from 64% last financial year up to 75% in FY14. So the industrial profits are key here. And the stock has been trading like a media stock, but great to see it coming back to its industrial drivers today. And the stock up by almost 6%. Yes.